Yes, it is a brand new day, my friend. And I'm glad to be back again. And seeing you, I hope you are going to be seeing me also. Because I believe this video will get you excited. Sunday and Monday wasn't so good for most of us. But I believe today, Tuesday, you have recovered. Let's get started, my friend. Look, today is a Champions League or European football day. Today and tomorrow. But believe me, I will not do, go into that unless I talk about Chelsea first. In the next video, I will come up with the European League news. Because that doesn't concern Chelsea after all. We need to look at what is happening in our club right now as Chelsea fans. Right? Get interactive. Send me your comments. Let me hear from you. Now, to the issues. Yeah, yesterday we were a bit, you know, we're not so happy, mixed feelings, angry. and But today, the good news to start with is that Chelsea, we are looking forward for the return of who? Moise Casado. His injury came as a surprise to most of us. And he was part of the reason why our midfield didn't really click the way we would have expected. Just as we were expecting Romeo Lavia to come back last week to join you know, forces with, with Casado in that midfield. The same way we never expected to lose Casado last Sunday to injury from the international break. But the good news is that Chelsea are hopeful Muska Saido and Noni Madweke will be back fit for their home clash against Aston Villa this weekend. That is the latest update. We are hoping that both Muska Saido and Noni Madweke will be fit enough to play on, on, on our next home match against Aston Villa. That is what we are expecting. We pray that some of these players need to come back to the squad. We cannot lose 12 players and we expect to be winning games. It doesn't just happen. Even Manchester City will struggle under 12 players. If 12 out of their squad is injured, now they have four that is injured. So let's hope that Casado will be back by the weekend for our home game. Casado and Donny Mandrake. Chelsea are protecting Nicholas Jackson and are not actively working on a new striker in preseason. Jackson was working really well with Christopher Nkuku. Chelsea believe that when Nkuku comes back, it will change everything for the attacking players. He was the key for Mauricio Pochettino. We all know that Nkuku's role in that number 10 position was a key factor. The, the Chelsea squad currently was being built around Nkuku. And so his injury took the, the team by surprise. You know, it took the team by surprise. It looks as if our plans got shattered. But as it stands right now, we have no option. He's injured and he's a footballer. It, any footballer can get injured at any time. And so it's affecting Nicola, Nicola Jackson the more. That is the reason why when Kuku was available, Chelsea really didn't want to sign any, you know, out and out number striker. They, they just wanted to follow up to see how Nicola Jackson would do with in Kuku. Even though they still have their eyes set on certain strikers, top-notch strikers, like I told the last time about uh, uh, um, Victor Simon, but they knew that the way Napoli was playing the game, they knew they, they could not just get him immediately. So they were building the team around Nkuku so that Nkuku and Nicola Jackson, they can work together. They were, they, even though they still have their eyes on a top-notch striker, and I'll get to that again. Right now, we have the latest news on Tony uh, I, 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 Ivan. Yes, I'll get to that right now. So, the fact of the matter is, our plans from the preseason got shattered before the season, the, the, the new season began. Now, we can only believe that Nkuku will come back as soon as possible. There's a, there are some pictures that are already in circulation. Nkuku updated his IG, Instagram status. As you can see it on your screen, Nkuku has updated his Instagram status with the work that he's doing for the, at the rehabilitation. He's getting fitter. He's working on himself. Yeah. The picture, as you can see it on the screen right now. So let's hope that he comes back on time. Let's hope he comes back on the time. Chelsea were never fully convinced on signing a traditional number nine striker and will keep protecting this idea for the next one to two months. And then let's see what happens next. One to two months is January transfer window. <laughs> That's the January transfer window. That's what we're saying, right? Yes. So right now, we after all, we cannot go to the market. Are we going to buy free agents? Who among the free agent market are we going for now? I don't see anybody that can fit into this current squad. So one to two months is just 
around January transfer window. I believe that they will just make the decision the next two months on whether, which I know, as it stands right now, we are going for a striker in January. We are going for a striker in January. Yeah. We are going for a striker in January. That for sure. That for sure. For a striker in January. Now, why am I saying this? Thomas Frank on Ivan Tony. <laughs> According to Sky Sports, Thomas Frank, Thomas Frank on Ivan Tony. So for me, he is one of the best strikers. As a striker number nine, I don't see many out there who is better in the world than him. Of course, you have Harry Kane, Robert Landowski, Ellen Haaland, and these types, but not many. He scores 20 goals in the Premier League last year. In, and of course, a very good Brentford side. But of course, we are not creating as many chances as the top six or seven teams. So imagine him in a top team. He would easily score 20, 25 goals. For me, I think he is composed. He is a good finisher. Top mentality. I understand why clubs are looking at him. This is from Sky Sport about Ivan Tony. And so I know, looking at this now, who, which clubs are looking at him? Number one is Chelsea. And he is our number two on the short list. It's two players we have. Either Victor Simon or Ivan Tony. And the way things are going, it looks like if we, we it looks like we are going to be it's easier to secure Ivan Tony down now in January than uh, securing Victor Osimen. It's easier on paper and in every way. It's more easier to secure Ivan Tony than to secure Victor Osimen. So I believe Chelsea are laying the groundwork towards that January transfer window. They are laying the groundwork towards that January transfer window. Let's keep our eyes on the ground. It's going to happen. It's going to happen, right? Chelsea are interested in Ivan Tony. Nothing advanced yet. Let's see which club comes with the right money to try to convince Brentford. Probably not before December. Chelsea will keep protecting the squad and let's see what happens in one to two months. According to Fabrizio Romano, he's also repeat, re repeating the same thing. So the news is all about Ivan Tony right now because everyone has got... To realize that Chelsea's problem is putting the ball in the net, scoring the goals. We need somebody to put the balls in the net right now. Right now. That is what Chelsea need now. Mauricio Pochettino is 100% sure that, potential, that the potential of the Chelsea squad is incredible. And the job is exciting. But it will take time. But it will take time. That we know. It will take time. Right? All right. On Conor Gallagher, many criticize Conor Gallagher's performance. But I have this task to let you know. Gallagher was one of our best performers in our Sunday's game. Gallagher had his best game for us in terms of ball progression last Sunday. And one of the most remarkable I have seen in a while in the Chelsea squad. We made 53 progressive passes. And Gallagher was involved in 26, made 17 and received 9. Involvement to that level, 50%, is very rare. It's very rare. So those who are on the nerves of Gallagher, take it easy. We know even they wanted to sell him during the window, the last day of the window. They wanted to sell him. But thank God he was not sold out. Now he's been useful to us. He's been useful to us. So let's be careful. Yeah. Let's be careful. Okay? Gallagher, for me, is an asset for Chelsea right now. Gallagher, Mod uh, Modric, and, and uh, goalkeeper San Sanchez. These two, these three, in our last game, Modric showed glimpses of what he can do. Yeah, he doesn't have much time. He played only first half, right? Second half, he was taken out. But I believe all the balls that came that went through his side. Modric, for me personally, he was one of our best players on Sunday. Modric, Sanchez, and uh, Sanchez, the goalkeeper, and Gallagher. 
These three, these three, they were the players that performed on Sunday for us. For instance, a player like Sanchez, initially I was so wrong about him. But look, if you look at his, his stats, I'll read his stats for you from, from, from that game. I don't know if I still have it here. From that game. I'll see if I can get his stats for you from that game. Okay, it's not here. It's not here. But he made a lot of saves. He protected our back four. He, his ball distribution was also excellent. His ball distribution was very excellent. He protected our back four and ball distribution was very excellent. So I'm very much happy the way he performed. That is Robert, uh, Sanchez, our goalkeeper. I'm very much happy about, it, about the way he performed. Christopher and Kuku via Instagram, in progress. He showed his pictures, there, like I told you. Yeah. And to run it up, before I come back later in the day for, um, for Premier League news or the Champions League or European football news, that will be my next video. I just wanted to know, our own uh, former boss, Mor Jose Moreno, <laughs> Jose Moreno, after Roma's 7 0 win over Empoli, do you know what he said? He said he feels so sorry for them. Jose Moreno says, I feel sorry for them, for Empoli. And according to him, the Roman boss, Jose Moreno, has stated that he feels sorry for Empoli. As a Jalorosi picked up a dominating 7 0 win over the Azuri. Today was going to be an important day in the season for Moreno's side, who had not won even once in the, se in the season before today's time. And because Romelu Lukaku, you hear that, and Paul Dibaya were starting at the same time, both the players were on the score sheet with La Joya grabbing a brace and Lukaku scoring a late goal. Pa Paolo Zanetti, Zanetti's side were never in the game and they had gone one nil down in the very second minute of the tie. After the game, Moreno spoke to D uh, uh, DAZN via TMW about the result and said, I feel sorry for them in Poli, but this is football and sometimes it happens. <laughs> Moreno was also asked about Lukaku's first goal in Roma Calais and revealed that even if it wasn't important for him, it was key for the player Lukaku. It wasn't important for me. Maybe it was to him. I care about the team. Whether he scores or not doesn't change anything for me. I care that he gives a different profile to the team. We have to learn to play better with him and he with us. We need matches to improve, and today from the bench, I saw things that I didn't like. I'm talking about the team, not Romelu. Lukaku had played some minutes in the previous games against Milan, but the win today will hopefully kickstart Roma's season. Not just Roma's season, it will hopefully kickstart his own season to, to regain his boots back. Yeah to regain his boots back. All right, Chelsea fans, let me leave you here. I'll come your way again with more Chelsea exclusives and European news in few hours to come. Shalom and peace.